Welcome back, everybody, to the NCAA Football 06 Montana State Bobcat Dynasty. These are the guys we're going to be pursuing during the in-season recruiting stage, starting with cornerback Brett Garrett. We're at number four on his list currently. We need some offensive line help, so we're going to be chasing tackle Justin Moore. We're already number two on his list. We're going to need help more on the offensive line outside just the tackle. We're at number one on this guards list. Defensive end is still a little bit of a need, so we are pursuing John White and we are number one on his list and might as well go after another tackle. That is why we are number two on Shannon McBride's list. Today we're playing the BYU Cougars. They got a pretty solid quarterback there. Uh, overall wise, they match pretty similarly with the Bobcats. So this should be a pretty good game. They have an impact wide receiver there. As you saw, their tight end, pretty solid. They have one good offensive tackle, but that's about it when it comes to the offensive line. Their guard and center situation, not the best. They have one good defensive lineman, really, that's over an 80 overall, and their linebacking core isn't that great either, and their secondary really isn't much to speak of, so honestly, they feel like they're a pretty similar team to us. They do have some solid safety, so I guess it's more so just their cornerbacks that aren't the best. But we're going to be without our best offensive lineman guard, Kevin Green. He's caught lying about why he's missing his exams. He's going to be missing this game and next week's game against Tennessee, so that is definitely going to hurt us. This is BYU's season opener. Montana State won last week in a heck of a game. In Larry Stevens' debut game, he tossed four touchdowns. We ended up winning 28-24. And now the fans at Bozeman get to see their new superstar quarterback for the first time at home. BYU, they're the visiting team, so they get to select. They go with Tails. Tails never fails, except it does this time for them. And the Bobcats are going to choose to receive. Brandon Adriano on first down gets the carry hurdles over a man and picks up seven yards on first down. Stevens drops back to pass for the first time today. Flush to his left and he's going to run instead. He's going to get brought down just shy of the sticks. Third and one we bring in Brian Brown and he's going to pick up just enough to move the chains and convert on third down. Fresh set of downs here. We're going to go play fake. Stevens is rolling to his right. He's going to take a shot here. That's Jesse Lester breaking through contact. And he's going to take it to the crib. Touchdown, Montana State. And that is actually Lester's first career catch with the Bobcats. Even though he was on the team last year, he didn't make any receptions. He had a drop, I think, last week. But here, his first catch as a Bobcat goes 60 yards for a touchdown. So now we got the kicker, Jason McMillan, kicking this one off. The freshman gets it to about the 9-yard line, where Harris is going to return this one. Gets through some contact here. He's going to race down the right sideline. Gets brought down at the 40-yard line. And BYU is going to start off their first drive of the game in MSU territory. So now Stefano takes the snap, connects with Austin over the middle, and his tight end is going to pick up about 8 yards. Offset eye formation here. They're going to fake the run. Shifano is going to go down, though, as the pressure got to him. I think that was Green who got the sack, and that's going to force a third down and nine. They're going to go five wide on this next play. Taking the snap here, surveys the field. A floor to the left side is going to be caught by Harrell, and that is going to pick up the first down. That's going to put them out to the 24-yard line. Shafano looking to throw back across his body there to Williams. And the impact receiver runs Jed Torrey over. And that's going to get them inside of the red zone. Goal to go. Now Shafano rolls to his right, right into a sack. That's the safety Freeman who got to him. And that's going to be a loss of three. Second and goal. It's a direct snap to Cox, the running back. But we were ready for it. Marquez Randolph gets the tackle for loss. Third and goal. Shafano fires to the left side. Pass is picked. Tim Hughes coming up with the first interception of the season for this Montana State defense. And that's going to force a no points on the field now for BYU. That drive goes to waste. And the Bobcats have this going the other way now. Trying to take advantage of the turnover. We're going to run it on first down with Adriano. But he's going to be held to just a single yard. Stevens going to dump this one off to Larry Lean, but that defense was all over him. No gain on the play. On third, Dan Larry Stevens fires to the left side and just a little bit off the mark looking for Gerard Doolin. But uh, we're, we're going to end up going three and out, and the interception goes for nothing. 
So now punching it away to Williams, the impact receiver. He's going to make an impact in the punt return game as well as he's going to take this to the crib. We allowed a punt return touchdown last week and we allow one today. The score is all knotted up at seven apiece now. Stevens takes a shot on first down, looking for Larry Lane, but the freshman unable to bring that one down as the pass was a little bit overthrown. Adriano breaks this one out to the right side. He's going to pick up the first down and more brought down from behind at about midfield. That is going to pick up a fresh out of downs, though. This is going to be a high snap for Stevens, who rolls to his right, and he's going to pick up about three or four yards on the ground. Stevens looks to pass again, rolling to his left. He's going to connect with Gerard Doolin, and that is going to pick up just enough to move the sticks. Once again, dropping back to pass is Larry Stevens, rolling to his right. Now he's going to run yet again. He's scrambled a lot so far in this game, and he's going to pick up the first down there. Three carries for 20 yards for our quarterback. Toronto won it with the running back now, but he's going to be held to just one yard again. Stevens is going to try to throw that one to the running back, but he got hit as he let it go. That's going to result in an incompletion. Now on third down, Stevens is going to take off and run again, and he's going to pick up the first down and get brought down just shy of the 10-yard line. Trying to punch this into the end zone. We're going to fake the run. Stevens rolling to his right. He's going to throw at the last second. And there he's got Jesse Lester. He has two catches in his career. Has a bobcat. And they are both touchdowns in today's game. That's going to put us up 14-7 to now after that very nice throw and catch. First and 10 now for the Cougars. They're going to fake the toss. And the quarterback going to run it to the right side. Picking up six yards. Dropping back to throw again. A floater to the right side. That's going to be off the mark and incomplete. Third and four. They're going to run it with the fullback. Bullock and he's going to be denied the first down. This defense forces a three and out. Brandon Adriano to the left side. Makes some moves. Gets through some tackles and gets brought down in BYU territory. First down and ten. Now we're going to fake the handoff and... Stevens, he got hit as he let the pass go, and that is going to result in an interception to McLaughlin. And that's going to be the first interception in the career of Larry Stevens. The pass to the left side is going to be incomplete. Jed Torrey on the coverage. They're going to go five wide on second down. Nugent makes the reception over the middle. That's going to make this third down and one. They're going to hand it off to Cox, but this defense was all over that. They came out in, you know, with, with four wide receivers out on the field. They're trying to make us think they were going to pass. They tried to run it, but we were ready, and we get another stop on defense. Brandon Adriano to the right side. He's going to pick up nine yards. He already has over 60 yards on the ground on just six carries. Stevens takes a shot over the middle on this next play, but it's going to be broken up. Third and inches now. It's a direct snap to Adriano, who breaks through some contact and picks up the first down. Five wide on this next play. Stevens, he's going to take a shot here looking for Jesse Lester, but the pass is going to be overthrown and sail out of bounds. On second down, Stevens drops back to pass, rolls to his left. He's got an open running lane in front of him, and he's going to take it. He's going to step out of bounds right at, out, out, out about the 50-yard line. Under a minute left to go in the quarter. Stevens is going to take a shot to the right side. He had lane open, but wasn't quite able to get it to him. A high snap on second down. Stevens steps up into the pocket, right into a sack. That's going to be a loss of nine. Now on third and long, we're looking to get this here. Stevens is going to take a shot, and Gerard Doolin makes a diving reception at the 28-yard line, and the Bobcats are going to burn a timeout. First down, now Stevens under some pressure, flush to his left. Once again, though, he's got a wide open running lane, makes that defender look silly, and he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Montana State Bobcats. Stevens gets his first career rushing touchdown now. This guy can do everything. He gets a 28-yard rushing touchdown. It looked like they might get the sack here, but he's out. He's able to outrun the defensive lineman there, make the corner look silly, and that's going to make this a 14-point game at the half. The Cougars are going to get the football to start off the second half. Stefano airs it out to the left side, and Harold is there for the reception. A big play for this offense, getting them into Montana State territory. He's going to dump it off to his running back, who gets some nice yards after the catch, picking up the first down. Maybe he was just shy. Nope, he did pick up the first. 
Shafano to the left side now, and the pass is going to be dropped. That's going to lead to second down out of the 36-yard line. Looking to throw again. He's got Perry over the middle, and that is going to set up third down and short. Are they going to run it? Nope, they're going to throw. Shafano looking to... Actually, now they're looking to run it. He ran into a pile of bodies at first, but he's able to bounce that out to the, to the left side there and pick up the first. Shafano looking to throw again. He's got Harrell over the middle, and that is going to pick up a gain of nine. Now on second down at inches, it's going to be a run for Cox. He's got a wide open running lane there, and he's going to pick up the first down before Randolph gets to him. Shifano looking to throw here. Now he's looking to run, stepping up into the pocket, and he's going to take this to the crib. Touchdown, BYU, and that's going to make this game a little bit closer. Their first offensive touchdown of the game. This defense has done a pretty good job keeping them in check so far, but they are able to get into the end zone. We're going to run it on first down with Adriano, and he's going to get tackled forward for a gain of four. Another carry here for the running back, Brandon Adriano, is going to break this one out to the right side, and that's going to get them out to the 44-yard line. A third straight carry for the impact running back, but he's going to be denied here as he's stuffed, picking up just two yards. Larry Stevens looking to throw for the first time this drive, but he's not going to throw it. He's going to run another open running line. I mean, if they're going to give it to him, he's going to take it. 83 rushing yards so far for the quarterback. Stevens rolling to his right. You know what? Might as well scramble yet again, picking up another first down before getting tackled out of bounds. He's closing in on the century mark. Stevens now throws over the middle and another pass that's just a little bit off the mark. He's been great for us so far, but once again, like I said last time, if you want to criticize him, you can criticize his completion percentage. He's currently under 50%. That was a nice throw, though, to set up third down and short. Stevens rolling to his left off his back foot. He connects with the tight end, Ryan, and that is going to pick up the first down. Under a minute left to play in the third quarter now. Stevens rolls to his right, takes a shot to the end zone. And that is part of the reason why he has a low completion percentage. There have been a fair amount of drops so far in these first two games. That one was a sure touchdown for Gerard Doolin, but he was unable to hold on to it. Last play of the third quarter is going to be a shot to the end zone, but it's going to be broken up there. That's going to bring us to the fourth quarter where we're going to attempt a field goal here with Jason McMillan. He missed one last week, and he's going to miss one again. This one's going to sail wide left, and it's going to stay a one-score game with five minutes left to go. This BYU offense trying to go downfield and tie the game up, but the defense comes up clutch there with a sack, forcing a loss of six. On second down, they're going to spread things out here, taking a shot to the left side. Harold, Harold makes the reception on the left side. We got some pressure on the quarterback, but he was able to throw it off his back foot, get it to his man. Once again, like last week, Jed Torrey, pretty solid coverage, but just, I guess, not good enough there. Shafano under pressure, and he goes down. The left tackle got beasted on there, and we get another sack. We got a lot of those last week, and we get another one here today. Shafano to the left side. Williams has the catch, but he was unable to get either foot in bounds. That's going to lead to a third down and long, and that's going to lead to a fourth down and longer. Marquez Randolph gets the sack, and that is going to give the Bobcats some prime position now to try to bleed this clock down, get into the end zone, kick a field goal, something, go up by two possessions, and hopefully win this game. But not if we're going to be turning the ball over. Luckily, we're not going to there. We fumble the football, though, and that's going to lead to second down and 21. We do recover, but it's just not good here. And then on second down and long, we're going to get sacked again now. That's going to lead to third down and a mile. So this defense, or this offense, rather, digging ourselves into a little bit of a hole. Third and long, Stevens is going to take a shot to the left, but the pass is going to be broken up. He was looking for Curtis Brown, and just like that, we got to punt the football away, and uh, they're in prime position now to try to go downfield and tie this game up before the end of the game, and maybe even force overtime. A nice play made there as they get a good chunk play. Now a throw to the right side is going to be overthrown as it sails out of bounds. Second and 10, Shafano looking to throw yet again, and he's got his man Cox. The running back gets them inside of the red zone now. 
First down out at the 17-yard line. This is Cox on the run play. Spins away from a defender and gets brought down inside of the five. Almost 200 yards rushing for this Bobcat offense. Meanwhile, the defense has held the opposing team to just 30 yards rushing, but it's still just going to be a seven-point game. They're going to call that a drop on first down. That's going to lead to second and goal. They're going to run it here with Cox, and he's going to get into the end zone for the BYU touchdown with just about a minute left to go in the game. But did they give this Bobcat offense too much time? Stevens is going to fire a strike over the middle there to Gerard Doolin. That's going to get us out to the 49-yard line. 46 seconds left to go. Stevens rolling to his right. He's going to take a shot there. And that probably would have been a touchdown if the pass was on the mark. Second down. Stevens is going to take a shot to the left side now. And Brown brings this one in. Inside of the five-yard line. Curtis Brown, the freshman wide receiver, coming up with a clutch reception there. Setting us up at the four-yard line. Using his speed there. Uh, that's so I guess his speed. I, I guess he did get past him, but still just a fantastic catch. We bleed the clock down to about 10 seconds left. Brandon Adriano gets into the end zone for his first rushing touchdown of the season. This one from four yards out. And that might just be the game winner with just 10 seconds left to go on the clock. All that we have to do is get a stop on defense. All we have to do is just keep him out of the end zone. That's all, like I said, that's all we have to do. But first we got to stop this kick return. And we're not going to be able to do that. 50 40. Williams is going to take this to the crib. We already allowed a punt return touchdown. Now we're going to allow a kick return touchdown with zeros on the board. And we're going to go into overtime at 28 apiece. BYU selects tails again. And once again, it's going to fail on them. And believe it or not, this is going to be the first overtime game in this series so far. This is looking like it's going to be a good one. BYU is going to start off overtime with the football there. The first pass is going to fall incomplete. Shafano looking to throw again. Fires to the left side. Harold makes the reception. That's going to pick up about eight yards. Now on third down, they're going to look to throw Shafano back across his body. And the pass is going to be dropped. That's going to be a pretty big drop probably. So now they're going to have to settle for the field goal. This is from 34 yards out. It is up and it is good. So now it's the Bobcats' turn to match or even win the game with a touchdown. Stevens is going to run it again. He's done a good job at that today. He's going to pick up the first down there. Out at the 14. Now Stevens moving to his left. Is he going to run? He's going to run again and pick up about six or seven yards. 99 rushing yards for him so far on the day. We're going to run it with Adriano, but this defense is going to get to him in the backfield. So now, third and seventh this is going to be a high snap for Stevens, and the pressure forces an incomplete pass. Probably a good incompletion, as there probably would have been a pick on that play had it been where he wanted it to go. So we're going to have to bring in McMillan, and now he finally hits a field goal. He has one of three in his career, and that is going to bring this to double overtime. The Bobcats get the football to start off this second period here. Taking a shot to the end zone. Touchdown, Curtis Brown. It just took one play, and we're going to extend this now. Not necessarily a triple overtime because now the Cougars have got to match this, but what a beautiful throw and catch there that got us into the end zone. If only we could have done that last time, we could be on top of this game now. A nice run there for Cox. You know, they're getting their running game kind of going now later in the day. We, we did a good job at shutting it down at first, but now it's kind of picking up. Taking a shot to the end zone on this next play, and that would do, that's going to go down as a drop. Could have matched the Bobcats' score there. Stefano looking to throw. He's got time in the pocket. He's got a man open in the end zone. Touchdown, BYU. That 11-yard pass is going to knock things up after they hit the extra point. And now we're headed to triple overtime. Stefano looking to throw in the pressure. He's got to force an incomplete pass. So they're going to spread things out now on second down. Now Stefano's looking to run it himself. He's going to pick up the first down and more. Brought down by the ankles there at the 10. Goal to go. Now Stefano's going to throw to the end zone. And the pass is going to be just a little bit off the mark and fall incomplete. Second and goal. Stefano to the right side. The pass is once again off the mark. 
Now on third and goal, can this defense hold? He's got time in the pocket. He's going to take a shot to the end zone. Touchdown, BYU. This is going to be a 10-yard pass. A beautiful throw and catch there. Once again, we were pretty good in the coverage, but you can't defend a perfect pass. Look at this replay. Like Brock Eugene was all over him, but was unable to break that one up. Now they've got to go for two, and Cox is in for the two-point try. And that's going to give them the eight-point lead now. We've got to match them. First down now. Stevens rolling to his right. Is he going to run? No, he's going to throw out the last second for Larry Lane. Touchdown, Bobcats once again. Just a one-play drive. That's what we've done for the past two overtime series for uh, MSU now. Stevens rolling to his right. I figured, why not screw it? I'm going to take a shot to the end zone, and it works out there. Going for two now to match them. Stevens is going to take it himself, but he's going to be denied as Larry Lane was unable to hold his block on the left side. And that is going to result in a BYU victory, 46-44. to Man, that was a heck of a game. I thought I thought I had that, that two-point conversion. I ran it with Stevens to the right side. I, I thought I had it, but unfortunately, he was unable to hold the block the wide receiver was. That is going to go down as my number one greatest game, and it definitely will be the number one greatest game in my mind, no matter what the game says. You know, That's definitely the number one game. Larry Stevens, four more passing touchdowns for him. He did have an interception, and he was under 50% completion percentage. But if you ask me, it's not his fault that we lost this game. It's not Adriano's fault it's none of the receivers fault it's the it's the special teams we missed the the, uh, the field goal there so you know that kick return touchdown would not would not have won BYU the game and also oh we we allowed two return touchdowns a punt return and a kick return touchdown if we don't allow just one of those we're not going into overtime especially that last one there so if we're going to be doing any finger pointing, we're going to be pointing towards the special teams uh, they did kind of let us down and uh, you know allow overtime to happen in the first place Despite the loss, Larry Stevens is going to get already his second offensive player of the week in the Big Sky Conference with four more passing touchdowns. We weren't the only overtime game in the conference. There were two more. One of them was Cincinnati over the Eastern Washington Eagles. Northern Arizona is going to get a big upset over Tennessee. Tennessee are, is our opponents next week, so that is kind of nice to see. Uh, there was an overtime game between FIU and Idaho State, and FIU is going to get the uh, victory there. And then Washington State is going to defeat Idaho with the score of 32-28. to A pretty nice week of games inside of the conference. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, this has been Jeffrey reminding you to stay moist.